Welcome to episode 60 of our Comfy UI tutorial series. Hello everyone and welcome. Today I'm excited to present the Infinite Talk workflow. With this setup, you can create realistic talking head videos directly from audio and images. Let's get started. I tried to create a comfy UI workflow that is organized and, let's hope, still easy to understand. Even if I use the one video wrapper that has a lot of settings and the nodes are new to me, so I will do my best to explain the essential nodes the best I can. As you are used to by now, in this note you have all the information you need to run the workflow. Models and custom nodes needed. I tried to put all the nodes that need to load the models in these reddish color nodes so it is easier to find them. Let me show you an example really quick. You first upload an image that you want to convert to a video. Let's add this man image. Then you need an audio file. The longer the audio, the more time it will take to generate. So maybe start with three or four seconds of audio first until you make the workflow work. And then you can increase the audio length. Then you add a prompt. A man is talking, a woman is talking, or something like that, adapted to your image. Then you adjust the size. I included here some recommended settings for you to get started. The bigger the width and height, the more time it will take to render. I set it up as portrait by default, but you can switch width and height to get landscape, so try to use ratios that match the ratio of your uploaded image. When you are ready, you click Run, and you will get a video that is driven by the audio. That means it will act to match the audio. If the audio has a pause, the video will do the same, and so on. If you hover over the video, you can also hear the sound. The videos are saved in the output folder. Here is the result. Welcome to the Infinite Talk workflow. Are you ready to test this? Let's go back to the Pixaroma note and I will explain how to get the models. The workflow is using the WAN 2.1, but you can experiment with other versions of WAN if you know how to adapt. For me, this one gave good results. You have here a title that is the node where the model is loaded, in this case the WAN video model loader. Then you can download the same version of the model I used from here and place it in the Diffusion Models folder. You can see I included the folder where you need to put it for each model. All those folders are inside the Models folder. If you go where you installed your Comfy UI, it is pretty easy to find the Models folder, and here you have all the folders I mentioned in that Pixaroma note. There was one folder that I did not have and I had to create it myself. It is this Wave2Vec2 folder, so create that folder and place the model inside it. To download the models, you have the links also in this note. You can click here and download them into the folders where they belong. Where I found alternatives, I included links to those. Try a few from here. I used a Q4 on my workflow, but you can try Q8 or other Q versions because on each computer it is different. Some are faster than others. The bigger the queue, the bigger the size, and it should have better quality. Once you decide and download a version, hit the R key to refresh and make sure you load it in the node it belongs to. Then you have the LoRa I used, and you can also experiment with other LoRas. If you go here, there are quite a few. You load the LoRa here. Then you need the infinite talk model. I only tested the single model, which means it can understand one voice, but there is a model for multiple voices. For this model, there are smaller versions if you have a smaller video card. You repeat the same steps for all the models until you have all of them. Also, do not forget to install the missing nodes. I only included three custom nodes. You can see the names here, and you go to Manager and Custom Nodes Manager and install them from there. The last model is this text encoder, but keep in mind that it does not work with all versions. For example, first I tried with this scaled version, but I got an error that it is not supported. So that is why I went with the BF16 version, because this one does not give me an error. So it is quite a lot of models needed for these workflows. Let's go to the top and let me show you this node that is quite useful if you don't have enough VRAM. What you can do is right click on it and select Bypass. Then you can try different values here. The Block Swap node is a VRAM optimization tool for WAN video models. It allows you to offload parts of the transformer model blocks from GPU to CPU when they are not being used, then reload them when needed. This reduces peak VRAM usage, which lets big models run on smaller GPUs, but it makes inference slower because of CPU to GPU transfers. I only played with the blocks to swap value, and that decides how many model transformer blocks to offload to the CPU. Higher saves more VRAM, but is slower. Lower uses more VRAM, but is faster. 
zero disables block swapping, but I just bypass that instead of using zero. This node is connected to the one video model loader where the block swap arguments input is. For the attention mode, I used SDPA as default, but if you have Sage Attention installed, then you can use that option to speed up generation. Quantization reduces weights precision for lower VRAM use if it is enabled. For the WAN Video LoRa Select node, you use it to load the LoRa and decide the strength of that LoRa. For the multi-talk model, you decide if you want to use the single model or the multi-model. If you have more voices, you will see later an example. Here is where you add the positive prompt, and here is the negative prompt. The image encoder extracts features from your input images, so the video generation knows what the subject looks like. I use this upscale image node to prepare the uploaded image to the right size, and then I use this get image node to get the width and height, so I do not have to input manually the width and height each time I change the image size. This way, I only change the size in one node. This multi-talk option refers to the old version of the multi-talk model, so leave this set to infinite talk even if you have multiple voices in the workflow, because you use the infinite talk model. The frame window size sets how many frames are processed in each chunk 81 by default, but you can reduce it to 45 inch special if you plan to do like 1,280 to 720 size videos. Larger values improve smoothness and lip sync consistency, but they use more VRAM. The motion frame controls how many frames overlap between chunks to maintain continuity, commonly 10 to 30% of the window size. Higher values give steadier transitions, but they also slow things down a bit. For this workflow, we have only one audio because we use the single model. But as you will see later, we can add a second audio for a second person. That comes connected here, and you need to change some things like the model and some settings to make it work. This node has values similar to the case sampler. I used six steps, but you can try eight to see if it helps. I used this scheduler, but you can adjust it depending on what one model you are using and what LoRa. At the end, we have the video that is saved at 25 frames per second. I tried 16 frames, but that did not speed up the generation, so I left it at 25. Here is another example with this image that you saw at the intro of this video. I used a longer 15 second audio, and it took longer to generate because I used 1280 pixels for the height. Hello everyone and welcome. Today I'm excited to present the Infinite Talk. Hello everyone and welcome. Today, I'm excited to present the Infinite Talk workflow. I have another example for a woman with a six second audio and the prompt adjusted to a woman is talking. I went with a bigger size, but you can probably use a smaller size to make it faster and then upscale. Here is the result. Hi, how are you doing today? I am an AI generated woman. I look pretty cool for an AI, right? Then I tried an example for a woman singing, but if the words are not very clear, the lip sync will also not be accurate. It depends on how clear the words are. Here is how it looks. Let me show you the multi-version of the workflows where you can have two people talking. Here is what is different. First, we need a multi-model, not the single one. So when you go to find the models, use the multi for multiple voices, and single when you have only one voice. Then in this node, you select the right version, in this case, the multi-model. Next, we need an image with two people. Here is what is important. It picks up the audio from left to right, so the first audio will be assigned to the first person, the one on the left, and the second audio will be assigned to the person on the right. Then both audio files are connected here, and you need to change this. If you use para, the audio will play at the same time, like in parallel. It depends on how you prepared the audio. I used add so it starts with the first voice and then comes the second voice. So audio one is first, and the second audio comes after that. Let me show you the result. Even with multi, it is not always perfect, but it can be fun to play with. Hi, my name's George, and next to me is the Infinite Talk Girl. Hi, my name is Infinite Talk, because I talk too much. Let me tell you a story. Thank you, Legends, for your support, and thanks to all who subscribe to membership. 
If you found this video helpful, leave a like and a comment to help with the algorithm. Have a nice day, and I will see you on Discord. You will probably see me also, even if not on Discord, maybe in your dreams. Pixaroma sends you kisses. Did you press that like button? Do it for me. Okay, gotta go. Bye-bye.